So it is in that context that I want to entitle my message today, Build Your House on the Rock. Build Your House on the Rock. How you build will determine whether you survive the snow. Noah built a house that was called an ark and his rock was not the turbulent floods that violently and ruthlessly eliminated the whole human race and all of creation. Noah's ark was his house that withstood the storms. It was indestructible, impenetrable. And similarly today, we need to know how to build so that we are immunized, we are preserved, we are protected, we are contained, and we are indestructible. We are immovable, no matter what happens. So you as a church, we as God's people, must learn how to build accurately. Leaders and heads of households, that's fathers of domestic families, and fathers or elders or pastors, or whatever you call yourself, of spiritual families, must arise to critically review whether we are building correctly. One of the things the Lord highlighted for me in the recent days as I've been musing, reflecting, contemplate, contemplating and having conversations with him is that this is a time where people will not be able to lead themselves. But true leaders must arise both in homes but also in the family of God to lead God's people. And he gave me a few portions of scripture that I want to share with you today. The first was from Matthew 24 verse 36 to 51. I may not be able to read everything to you, but I want to highlight a few points so that you would know how to live in these days. Matthew 24 probably would become a flagged portion of scripture during this time, because many of you are asking the question, are these the end times? Is this the end of the age? Is the Lord Jesus physically, literally, bodily returning at a time such as this? I cannot fully answer those questions for you, but I can tell you that we can learn from such portions of Scripture. But of the day, verse 36, 24, 36, but of the day and hour no one knows, not even the angels, the messengers, the carriers, of divine words from heaven. None of us know, but my Father only. My Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So there's a comparative here between Noah and how the Lord will come. I don't know whether it's going to be through a theophany, an epiphany, or a little bodily naked. Return, as the angel said, as he went and up into heaven and was received by the cloud, Acts chapter 1, so will he return. I don't know that yet, but I know there will be many appearings of the Lord before he literally comes to his people. Whether this is another epiphany or theophany, is a matter of interpretation. But what we do not do know, this is a day where the Lord can appear to us in different forms. But we can learn from Noah, a man of rest. Noah means rest. How do you build a house, an ark? By being a righteous person, so that when there is a flood, when there is judgment, you, you and your family could rest in the midst of a storm, sleep in the helm of a boat like Jesus when there's a storm. And I, as I have previously stated, none of us have the right to speak to a storm. There are a lot, lot of soothsayers today, speaking positive words. I bind you, devil. 
I speak prosperity. I bless you. I call divine immunity. You can't do those things if you don't know how to first build something that you can sleep in. If you cannot sleep in a storm, you will not be able to speak to a storm. Jesus only spoke to his storm after he slept in it. And if you don't know how to rest in the midst of a storm, then we will not be able to speak or have governmental control. So positive speaking is new age practice. But learning how to rest in the Lord like Noah is going to be very important. But he was a preacher of righteousness, which simply means he did not just preach righteousness, he lived by divine design, by compliant standards to a heavenly order. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, all the things that we have been challenged with today, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And we don't know whether this was 100 years or 120 years. We know that he built for a long time. And there are scriptural references to these timelines. But that's not the matter. But only when we build right and we step into an accurate location in God, then we will see immunity coming to us and judgment coming to the world. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Now we do know that in Noah's case, he was left and everyone else taken. We have taught the other way in Pentecostal charismatic circles. We will be taken and the unrighteous left behind. This scripture clearly tells us in the days of Noah, all the unrighteous were removed, eliminated, deleted, trashed, rootlessly taken out. And only the righteous were left. And those were eight people plus all those, that, uh, uh, all those animals that were in the boat. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore. And the word watch means vigilant. It also has reference to watchmen. Uh, it means learning how to assess, analyze the times we are. Therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. You do not know. So we have to be on constant alert, vigilant. We need to learn how to flag the times that we are in and not live in a comatose state of indifference or in denial or in this vacuum of religious indifference. We must know how to be watchful in a time such as this. But know this now, and this is where I want to go to. This is where I want to go to. I will talk about other things in maybe in the future. But know this, and this is in the context of that. And I'm speaking to leaders now. Fathers of domestic units, mothers in single homes that are leading homes, individuals that are leading yourselves. I'm also speaking to spiritual leaders, pastors, apostles, heads of movements, denominations. I'm speaking to a multiplicity of people today. But know this, that, that, that if the master, the I call despotess the head of a family the father of a household the leader of a house that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and allowed his house and, and, and not allowed his house to be broken into so there is a statement being made here that leaders have a responsibility to be watchful over their families, their spiritual households, their people groups, their communities that they give leadership of. And the word is used, oikos despotes. We even get the word despot from them. 
These are leaders, affirmatively. I'm not suggesting in any way that we must become despots and autocrats and, and control freaks. But these are very strong words in the Greek. In other words, God is saying, these are people that I've given the right to lead their people firmly. Firmly. Definitively. Now, know that if the master of the house had known what, the, what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house, his family, to be broken into. Invaded. And this virus is invading, transcending, permeating walls and barriers. So there is an invisible edge and it's directly linked to how people lead. Therefore, you also, referring to his leadership of the day, Jesus speaking to his disciples, be ready. Be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour. You do not expect him. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? What are the qualities of those who would lead households, lead communities? Whom his master made ruler? over his household as in the days of Noah remember this is the end time message leaders this is not about individuals this is about leading whole communities who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household our Lord has placed people over his household to, and listen to this to give them food in due season not to fill them with fear Peter do you love me you know I love you Lord feed my sheep Peter do you love me feed my sheep Peter do you love me you know I love you why are you asking feed my lambs because the only mandate God gave to his apostles feed in the end times, we need leaders not to play games. Not to become freaky and flaky. In the end times, we need leaders of households, domestically and spiritually, to feed the people so that they become what they eat. To overcome this virus, you have to know how to eat the food that comes from heaven. Bread from heaven. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Blessed is that servant whom his servant, when he comes, will find so doing. This is not the time for 20 minute messages, for motivational speaking. This is not the time to use the tactics that have been given to us by secular psychologists that will deal with the psychology of the natural man. This is the time for the servants of God to arise to speak and be the angels that carry the word of the Lord on the wings of an angel that will bring healing to the people. The food from heaven. This is when angels fed Jesus at the end of his fast, when he was at the point of death, his weakest moment in the wilderness. And after that, Jesus would say to the devil himself, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the blessings of the servants of God will be that when the Lord comes, however he comes, he doesn't find you doing anything else but feeding God's people. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler of all his goods. If you are found feeding on the word of God, then you will be made ruler over all his assets, over his kingdom. And if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants to eat and drink with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs>